Hello friends, this is Praveen and today we are going to learn about the light. Light is an essential part of our daily to daily life. In previous classes of the chapter right, we have learned that there are two types of the objects that are classified based on they do produce their light or they do not produce their light. The substances which produce their light are known as luminous objects and the objects which do not produce the light is known as non-luminous objects. And we learn about the different types of the materials which allow the light to pass through them or not to them or they partially these are transparent, translucent and opaque respectively. So and we also learned that the light always travels in a straight line. This is known as the rectilinear propagation of the light. So let's get started. So first we have the reflection. So what is the reflection? A reflection is nothing but if I have a surface here and a light is coming the bouncing back of the light bouncing back of the light in the medium or is known as the reflection of light so let's learn about the few terms in the reflection of line so if I draw a perpendicular to this medium that is called normal so it is it is normal and the angle between the incident this line which is ray which is hitting the surface uh, that is the surface is coming is known as an incident ray that is denoted by i r and the ray which is reflected is known as the r r that is reflected ray and the angle formed by the normal and the incident ray that is this angle is known as the incident angle that is incident angle and this formed by the normal and the reflected ray is known as the that is reflected angle so this is and we can say with this that angle incident plus this angle will, let's name it x uh, they will form a 90 degree and this angle would be always equals to this angle that is angle x that we will see why it is possible in the laws of reflection so what does the laws of reflection states there are many two types of laws of reflection the first law states that angle that is angle incident is always equals to angle of the reflection that is this angle is equals to always the, the angle of reflection we have seen or we can do a, practi a practical approach to find that it is always true but what is would be the logical approach so if you this can be explained by the Fermat's principle of least time so it states that the light is in hurry so what if I give you an example in which I have two poles equally poles so so I have two equal poles and there is a red which is running from this pole that is pole A to pole B from pole A and again to the pole B running across this line so uh, there is a crow or you may take an eagle who is standing on the pole B and need to capture this red and it has its next nest on the pole A so what would be the minimum distance or the mere which path would be the path so that it reaches the from the pole B and to the pole A with catching the red that would be simply the, in the center to, it, had, it has to catch the red in the center such that this line would be always equal to this line with causing that from we can prove through the concurrency that if a perpendicular is drawn through it this would be angle incident that this angle would always be equals to this angle so that is in the light if we assume the eagle as a uh, light so it follows the principle that is incident angle is equals to the reflected angle so uh, we see incident angle is equals to reflected angle now we have this sum both the in, uh, incident angle and the x sum up to 90 degree as well as if you will can take this reflected angle as an incident angle and this forms a 90 degree so the angle x would be equals to here 
So this is the first law of the first law of the reflection of the angle. Second law states that there is no oh, spin balling in the light. That means if you are throwing a ball, it would go straight without changing the angles. So if I have a ball right coming right me and it bounces, it would hit right, uh, come directly towards me. It would not diverge. That means that the angle incident ray, the normal and the reflected ray would always lie in a same, same thing. So this is the second law of the light. That is reflection of light. So now let's move to the two. There are two types of the reflections, which is known as a regular and a diffuse reflection, depending on the surface which it hits. If we have a smooth surface, so this is the surface, and we have a smooth surface where, uh, yeah, as we know that if you zoom in the substances, my uh, they have a minute levels of the depth or the rough surface but if you take or assume a flat surface without that we call it as a smooth surface and when a parallel beam of light is coming so we have a parallel beam of light coming it would go in the same uh, when it is bounced back or it is reflected it would go as parallel so if this follows this is known as a regular reflection or the smooth reflection but what happens in a bumpy cases or bumpy scenarios or a rough scenarios when there is a bumps on the surface when the parallel beam of light is coming it is not necessary that the light would always be parallel and in, this, in uh, such scenario you can see that a light is getting uh, diffused or this type of the uh, Reflection is called rough reflection or diffuse reflection. The smooth and the rough is coming from its surface. So, uh, in the both the scenarios, the both follows the angle uh, that is the uh, laws of the reflection. If a surface is a light is bouncing, it always follows the laws of reflection. It may be a plain surface or a uh, regular or a rough surface. So now let's move to the plane mirror. We all have seen a plane mirror. So plane mirror is a what is actually is a plane mirror? A plane mirror is a smooth glass which has a mercury coating it inside outside. So what it does it do? What does it do is that it do not like to be absorbed inside it. So all the, um, it has some minorities that 99% is, is reflected but 1% one, but 1 is absorbed. So that we are not considering. So when the light is coming it would bounce back exactly. So this is a plane mirror. Now let's see what are the different types of images formed by the plane mirror. So first to know what type different types of images can be formed by plane mirror. Let's revise what are the images. So, an uh, image is formed when the two beams, uh, that is two light rays are meeting at a single point. If uh, I have a two line meeting at this point, so this point is my image. Or the two lines are meeting at a single point where an image is formed. So depending upon that, we have the two images, which is a real image and a uh, virtual image. A real image is always captured on a screen and it can be formed uh, it is actually meeting the light the light rays which are coming are actually meeting these are known as real real images and but in some scenarios uh, two lines are meet they are not meeting but it appears us to meet at some particular uh, for some particular just like if I have a mirror here and there is a uh, two diverging uh, beams are coming and it goes in that direction that is all diverging more and more what is the observer uh, if he is seeing from here we will it will see that the image must be formed here or the 
these two rays are converging at this point but it is not actually converging this type of the image is called virtual image and the real image is always uh, uh, that is inverted and the virtual image is always erect that means it is upright so now we have learned about what are the images so what types of images are formed in a plane mirror so with this we can make a diagram in which a, from this point a two parallel beam of light is coming so now it would be get reflected back if the diverging beam of light is coming to the plane mirror it would diverge more so a observer from here would think that the line is meeting at this point so this point which is not actually meeting is called the image image and here we have is an object so the image and the object so what are the characteristics of this image first it is the equal distance from the plane mirror so it has an equal distance from the mirror that is the image distance is always equals to the object distance and one more characteristic that it follows is that the image formed is the same size as the object so uh, there would for a competitive approach if uh, uh, something is of one meter let's assume it to be one meter the minimum height to watch this in the mirror or uh, to the minimum length of a mirror that the whole image could be watched is without changing your uh, eye level or moving your eye is the which is 1m and there is m divided by 2 so this is for the competitive approach so have you ever watched uh, uh, ambulance is written in an inverted form why it is written so this is written because when we see in a plane mirror that is in the front uh, of the car we see it properly as an ambulance written so in this property that is from the left to right this is known as a lateral inversion so what happens so if I have a plane mirror here and in this scenario case I have a letter L inside it so it would be written in the form of this which would be opposite the left side of the, this line would go to the right and the right side of this line go to the left so this causes a lateral inversion which is simply left and right uh, reversal so this is the image formed by the plane mirror so now let's see what is the multiple reflection have you tried uh, this we have only a single mirror but what we have if we have two or more mirrors so let's see in a scenario of two uh, when we go to a barber shop which has a mirror in the front of us and a back side of it we not see only one image is formed but we see a many image are formed this is known as a multiple reflection uh, let's take a scenario in which uh, there are two mirrors which has a contact point here and this are placed at an angle 30 degree and if you are asked how much images are formed then how we can calculate it so what you have to simply do is take the if you have 360 images uh, 360 degree then let's divide 360 by 30 and one the, this image which is object it is also including as the object so we have to minus one from it so for this the form we get a formula to calculate for the uh, or the even number of images that when the theta is uh, even we have to calculate it as 360 divided by theta minus 1 this is for the even numbers of, of the theta and when it is odd we simply get 360 by theta so these are the formulas to calculate it so there are two principles which works on the multiple reflection of light which is called the periscope and periscope so what is the periscope a periscope has a a mirror placed at a 45 degree 
from both sides. So now, when an observer sees from here, the light rays comes here and reflect it at here and it moves in this direction. So it is used to see. Um, yeah, in a normal case, when this mirror would be not here, he would see the things which is front of it. But it is now seeing the front, with, uh, not in a front of it. So this and one more principle which is candeloscope. So it works uh, by the three mirrors are placed, uh, each having a 60 degree angle. And they are taped inside it and just some decorative materials are put inside it and it is used to watch. So what would happen? Uh, it would form a uh, hexagon and now the images would be uh, one image would be appearing in all the three directions. That is for our rest five directions. So now let's move to the concave and the convex mirrors. These are known as the spherical mirrors. We have now tried only to see the straight mirrors. That is the plane mirror. But what if I curve the mirror? This is the case in this of the spoon. In a spoon, the inner surface of the spoon is a concave, means it is appearing as like a cave and another side which is a convex a convex side concave this is concave mirror and this is this is the convex mirror so what happens if a light is coming uh, it all converges to a point so this is known as a concave or the converging mirror but what happens if in this scenario a parallel beam of light is coming it would diverge more and more so it would diverge the images uh, that is the rays so this is known as a diverging mirror so let's see the different types of the images formed by the concave mirror So to see what different kinds of images form, first we have to learn the different uh, terms related to, to the concave and the convex mirrors. So all the concave mirrors and the convex mirrors are obtained from the spherical mirrors. That's why these convex and the concave mirrors are together classified as a spherical mirrors. If I have a smooth polished uh, surface that is a cylinder uh, that or uh, sorry sphere and if I cut at this position this is known as the concave mirror and if I uh, do it opposite or this make it this type then this is known as convex mirror so this and let me take the or uh, that is the radius of this that is the center of the circle as O and the radius as R. So this R here we have a special name that is called the center of the curvature and the distance which is half of the R2 that means this angle, this distance and this distance are uh, taken exactly between this point this is called 2 by R or this is also known as the focus. So here the, uh, the rays are likely to meet at this point. A parallel beam of the rays are likely to meet at this point. But you will say that a convex mirror diverges uh, all the rays. But when how it, it has a focus. So this we have is a parallel beam of light. It would is sending it away. So what do the observer would think if he is here? He would think that the image is, is being formed at the focus. So a focus of the convex mirror do not lies on the same side of the uh, lies, uh, rays coming. It is lies on the opposite side. But it is the opposite scenario in the concave mirror. So now if I had a concave mirror and this is our 
this line is called the principal line which is passing through the center of the uh, center of the mirror so if you have is now depending on the object we place we form a different types of images if you form place the image which is very close to the concave mirror so what would happen a light would come here and another light would go from here from here it would start diverge uh, it would go in the same direction but in this direction it would go diverging so now who it forms uh, observer would think that it is now coming at this point so it is a virtual image is formed so when the place is formed uh, when the object is placed near to the close very close to the concave mirror uh, it forms a virtual and an array image in the second scenario uh, now let's say it not to be that much of close but not that much of to be far so now a line would come and a ray from here it would come and it would go in the same direction and it would go like that way so it is uh, it would go in that direction and this is going in that direction so the image is meeting at this point so so now the image form here is a real image because the lines are actually meeting at this point so the real image and the erect image that is real and inverted image is formed here if we take the same scenario if the object is placed far away that is very far we would see the same principle in action that a parallel beam of light would be coming and would it would be actually meeting at the focus that is focus which is meeting so it is the forms a real and a inverted image so these both the images formed by the concave mirrors let's see the con uh, convex mirror so let's take this to be a principal line and let's take the image to be at a far away distance so what happens all the rays which are coming as diverging so they would never meet so only the virtual images are formed in the case of a convex mirror so all the rays are diverging if we take at any place and the person thinks that it is meeting at the focus so this is like if we will take from the near object then also it would be the same scenario for so a convex mirror forms the same images that is the virtual uh, that is virtual and erect in the case of a convex mirror uh, this do not depend upon the position of the object so these are the images formed by the Concave spherical mirrors. So now let's move to the ref, uh, reflection, uh, reflection of the light. So, in some cases or some scenarios, the light which is entering or coming do not reflect back, and it is go through the medium. That is, it is going through the medium. This is known as a reflection of the light. So in this scenario, it would have to go in a straight line, but it is not good. This is because of the change or the density of their mediums. So if we have a then uh, this is medium M1 and medium 2, and they have a different density, so the light would not go in this uh, same direction, but it would bend. This bend depends upon the density of the medium. That is, uh, density upon the mediums. If the M1 is rarer than the M2, so the image, uh, the light would get diverge or bend towards the normal. The normal is perpendicular here. But if it is opposite scenario, oh, and uh, the light is the M1 is denser than compared to the M2, so the image. Uh, the light ray would get diverged or bent away from the medium so that is normal so it would move in that direction so why does the bend of the uh, bend of the light it takes place this also can be explained uh, with the help of a Fermat's principle of least time let's take a scenario in which 
अब इट इज द सी एंड हेयर इज द लैंड Uh, here we have a see or uh, you may say a person is sitting here and uh, you are standing perpendicular to it so you, to save it you have to run perpendicular to that is a shortest line that uh, considered you as a light so it would uh, you would also go into protect for the shortest time but but you are not perpendicular to it you are but somewhere else in this direction so what would you do, uh, do to save this person you know that you can learn uh, run faster than the uh, on land than swim uh, slower in the sea so you would go if you would go perpendicular to this direction it started uh, uh, going perpendicular to it you will notice that the distance covered here then and the distance covered here is shorter but you take not very much less time to swim uh, uh, than compared to the running so this method or the logical terms would be like would be moving in this direction so by doing this the doing this the person uh, doing this the person that is you follows that you are bending towards the that is uh, towards from the perpendicular uh, that is normal that you are following so what exactly depends that is the change in the velocity of the light causes the here you can see the reflect reflection so a substance which do is a glass slab so what is a glass slab it is made up of glass and uh, we have a air outside and we have a slab outside we have a rectangular slab here so what would if a male or a line is a light ray is coming it due to its denser so it would bend towards the normal but while getting outside now it is denser compared to inside so it would bend away from there doing this we will see that the line which is coming and the line which is going outside are parallel to each other because the uh, divergent which is from the when entering to the slab and going out to the slabs are equal so it is moving in the parallel direction but the distance which has it covered in the divergent line uh, diver divergent it is not equal so the distance that means the they do not form a straight line but they are forming a parallel lines with the help of glass slabs while placing in an intricate pattern we can form different types of the lenses so we have here the lens is lens so let's take a, a glass slab in between and let's take a thicker approach and that is thicker and like we create this type of pattern and last it is so now what we have we have a thicker it is at the center and the thinner at the sides and so what would happen here if a light is coming perpendicular to it would go straight but now in this direction we have not a rectangular prism so it would bend towards the center in the same way there the, it would the bend would take more and more in this direction so what we have formed is called a lens and this lens is called a convex lens in a same uh, in the same case if we have to take a rectangular at the bottom and now we are not getting thinner and thinner we are getting thicker and thicker so we form a, and we go more divergent to the upside and in the same case we do it right here so we form up a so now we have formed up a concave that is called concave lens now we have formed a concave lens so what happens the now light have to travel more and more so it is diverging diverging it is the opposite case in a the mirror in the concave mirror is known as for diverging uh, that is converging 
but in the, this lens in, uh, scenario, the convex uh, lens is uh, called the diverge, uh, that is converging lens, and the concave lens is known as a diverging ray uh, lens. So with this, we can infer that the properties of the image formed by the convex, um, that is convex lens, would be same as a concave mirror, and the image formed by the concave uh, lens is equal to the image formed by the convex uh, mirror. So let's prove this. So now let's see the image formed by the concave and the convex mirrors. So uh, that is uh, lenses. So the first we have a um, that is a convex lens. A convex lens that is the optic center of air. So while forming the images in the con uh, that lenses, you have to remember two points. The parallel beam of light would meet at the center, that is the focus, and the diverging beam from the focus goes parallel after diverging through the mirror. And if a ray is coming, it will go unaffected if it is passing through the optic center, which is the center of the uh, lens. So this we have to notice by forming the images. So first, let's form the images by. In a concave scenario, let's consider it in the same way with a, a concave mirror. So this is concave mirror and this is con convex lens and this is concave mirror. So, we see that the image uh, formed, we told you that it would be the same. So, let's try it. So, first, let's keep a very close to, uh, very close image to the, uh, that is, lens. So, what would happen? Uh, light would go, it would pass through here. But another line which was passing through the optic center would go diverging. That is, it would go diverging, so the person would so, uh, imagine that it is meeting at this point that would be meeting at this point, so it is a virtual image this form. But as we go further, the image now if you go further from here, the image now it is perpendicular to here and it is passing through the center and another is passing through the center. So now they are actually meeting at this point, which is a inverted image form. We know that an inverted image is a real image. So in the middle case, it is a real image. Now let's take for the further scenario. So further scenario, all the light is parallel to it. So parallel light will come. We have told you oh, that it will meet at the focus. So a real image is formed in this scenario also. So these types were the images formed by the convex lens. So let's see about the concave lens. Now it has seen now I told you that the convex lens uh, that is concave mirror uh, lens has the same property as a convex mirror. So it we have we are now taking the case of a concave lens and let's take a diverging now all the rays which are coming and forming at the that is the concave lens are diverging so never a real image can be formed so all the scenario when we are taking an image which is closest to it or it is, even if it is farthest from the same the image would be never be a real image real image that is the lines or, or the light rays are never going to meet. So it appears for the observer that they are meeting at some point. So a virtual image is always formed in the case of a concave lens and a convex mirror. So now let's move to the 
dispersion of light. So when the light forgets that how much speed it have to go or it decreases the speed very low. So what happens? Uh, the different st uh, colors started coming to out of this, uh, out of the light. So why this is possible? This can be explained with the, the Newton's disk. So what happens is there, uh, we have a disk uh, that is circular disk which has a center and now it is divided so now it is divided into the seven uh, uh, figure seven color seven or more colors you may take and now color each of the part with the different colors and when you will spin it faster and faster you will obtain that a white color is formed if you will mix the colors that is different types of colors you will form a black but this is not a scenario with a light scenario when you mix that is paint different colors and try to rotate faster and faster you will see a white light is formed so we can take a white that is uh, that is white light is a mixture of different types of the colors so what we have is a prism this is called exactly a triangular prism so when the light is passed through it it disperses it or shows us the speed of the light so much that different uh, we know that different colors have the different wavelength so different uh, colors are separated from each other and out of a prism the different colors are coming so we can prove that these colors are not coming from the prism but it is coming from the light by if you keep a prism which is inverted, we will notice that these all colors mixes with a single uh, with a white light and forms a white light again. That is the white light again. So this is known as a dispersal of light. The rainbows are the examples of the dispersion of light. In this scenario, while you have to be between the raining if some part there is a raining and you have to be between the sun so that light is are coming they by the droplets of the water they are dispersing and you see a rainbow oh in this scenario you have to be between the uh, sun uh, that is the uh, sunlight and the raining section so now let's move to the human eye In previous class, we have discussed that uh, uh, light from our uh, that is a light from a luminous object uh, comes, hits the surface and hits our eyes. Then we are able to see that uh, surface which has light. So how our eye works to sense that uh, uh, what types of images form or what type of kind of object is that? So now let's learn about the human eye. So what a human eye is, typically we need to form an image, we need something to be screened. We need a screen to be formed and we need, so a line would come and hit and meet at single point. But not all the lights are, that is not all the lights are converging lines, some may be parallel and some may be, uh, some may be uh, diverging. So we require a con Vex, uh, that is convex lens for supporting the different types of images formed uh, here and if uh, a parallel beam of light is coming it required a less converging point so the focal length should be less but if the diverging lies, uh, lights are coming that is diverging lights are coming so it has to converge more and more so we require something to change its focal length so we have something muscles call it muscles here we will name these uh, substances afterwards so now to protect e these we have a outer scenario case uh, outer case and we have something fluid to converge it here and sometimes what we have in, when we are uh, sitting in a room of dark uh, dark and we, when we go outside the the amount of the sunlight or the amount of the light irritates us and that makes our eyes close. So this is, uh, we have to make something to control the uh, 
entering of the lights and uh, that is lights so we require a substance here which has a hole inside it and we have to control it with another type of muscles and now the we have typically formed something structure but the, our image is now perfectly to form but how could we see it so we require something to send it to the uh, that is the brain so now let me name this part the first with the screen in our eyes is known as retina this is known as retina and the lens is known uh, in the same, same case is known as lens the muscles which control the functions of the lens is known as ciliary muscles or uh, lens muscles but uh, the ciliary muscles are the muscles which control the function of the amount of light entering through it so this substance is called iris iris and here we have the pupils which uh, depending upon its uh, depending upon its hole it is known uh, let the light to enter it through it and these are controlled by ciliary muscles and the outside which is uh, protective case here we is known as a cornea it also provides a minute level of the conversion so these all were the parts of the lens uh, that is the eye and the uh, nerve which carries the signal to our brain is known as the that is optic nerve so now let's learn about the power of accommodation so what happens in a power of accommodation that there are two parts so first is the controlation of the lens and the second is eyes so first lens is controlled as you see because uh, all the not all the lights uh, light rays which are coming are converging so the, some the, that may be diverging some may be parallel so they require the different types of focal length to converge at a fixed uh, screen that is called retina in our eye so the first case that is called accommodation of the lenses uh, that is the power of accommodation of the lenses and second when we sit in a dark room and go outside we so what happens with the uh, availability of the less uh, light inside we have to see more and more so our pupil got bigger in size so now it can uh, take more of light inside it and take the form the image but when you are going outside the large number of rays it could be harmful for our eyes and burn the retina so what does it do it control the uh, control the amount of light entering through our eyes so in this case it is known as the power of accommodation for the eyes so now let's move to the persistence of vision so a persistence of vision our uh, i have told you that our eyes make up the images then how we pursue the things as moving things or how do we see as a video so for this you can perform an experiment that is take a disc uh, and a center hole and take make a different types of images here just like let's make make me simpler first there is a man who uh, first his hands are down then he is uh, slightly raising his hands and then he is slightly more raising his hands and then he is completely raised then he is two uh, forms of one type of series when you will rotate it with this, uh, not that much of faster but not that much of slower you will see that uh, it makes a person doing his hands up and down so this is called our eyes require some time to sense that uh, or to differentiate between two images but when the time got uh, shorter or smaller we do not uh, distinguish between the two images and it forms a single chain of uh, images which is known as the videos or the moving objects so this is known as a persistence of vision and now our eyes may be not always functioning properly there may be some defects in our eyes so there are major two types of defects that are commonly that is myopia and hydromyopia and there may be some uh, defects also we will see them uh, later as we go through it so first what is a myopia a myopia is a, also called as short sightedness in which a person is not able to see far away objects 
why this uh, is the case why he is not able to see far away object so that if we have a typical human eye here that is eyeball and the nearest spot we can see is 25 arm uh, that is 25 cm why 25 cm because our power uh, when it goes really really hard we can up see up to 25 but we will say i can see up to the, that much of higher uh, but it is not clear but or you may have to apply pressure through your lens and this started a irritation in our eye so the normal range is 25 cm and uh, the longest range we can see is infinity that is the, for the normal light why infinity because the light which is coming from the far away stars and bodies so this may we can see it so we have an infinite power range uh, that is light range but due to the for not function in, in of the lens that means it has not been able to con uh, that is convert that its focal length is not able to change we got this two defect that is myopia and high uh, hydromyopia so in hydromyopia what we have is we cannot see the far away objects as i told you so this could be because of the rubbing of the eyeball or genetic problems so that's why uh, some child, uh, people have the blind uh, that is myopia from the their birth so what in this case the our lens is not able to if you have it here not able to convert it so now what uh, that the image formed is before only it is formed before only the, the compression size of our eyes is decreased so now we have to introduce a con concave lens to make it work so why concave lens first when the light is coming now it would start diverging and uh, we know that near side objects are diverging rays and we can convert it so now we can convert it properly so this is how we can uh, correct uh, the myopia can be corrected by the concave uh, concave lens as you can see on oh, now hydromyopia hydromyopia is opposite of the myopia so in this scenario a person is not able to see uh, a nearby objects so in the same scenario as myopia it could be the, the cause of the rubbing of the eyeball uh, in which a uh, eyeball is getting shorter or uh, there is genetic problem in our human uh, that is genetic problems so when we have a typical human eye and now diverging we can't see but a far away object is uh, okay so what we can infer that the least uh, that is the highest focal length is decreased so now we cannot diverge or the, we can include that the eyeball has becoming smaller due to the rubbing so uh, so the image is um, forming after the retina so this could be corrected by using a con wax lens so we can for, uh, so if we have the object here and now to convert it more we have to convert it more so if it is converging and now we can either convert it to form the images fixed at retina uh, before that it was forming after the retina which was the original uh, where the normal uh, ori uh, retina was but it is now due to it forming before so this is known as a hydromyopia and it could be caused by the convex lens but in a case when a person has both of these this is known as a presbyopia so presbyopia what in the case is that a person uh, due to the old age is not able to see neither far away objects and neither the small uh, that is the small that is near objects which are nearer to it so so how we can cure it we see uh, while reading we see downwards so and uh, while looking forwards we see up uh, straight so this can be called we can see that now we can take a downward that is a concave mirror uh, convex mirror at a down so because we can read that is a slow problem and take a convex lens uh, that is concave lens upper side so to see the far away objects so the this is known as by focal lens 
which has both the focal lengths of it and so it is useful in the both the scenarios uh, now let's move to the astigmatism so what is in this case is uh, this in this case a person is uh, not able to see the bone nearby but it is not due to the change in the older sickness and in this scenario we are using a cylindrical lenses with the cylindrical lenses is typically tight like that way in this is causes the both of them and now we have is one more disease that is called cataract so what is the cataract in which uh, we see in our uh, that we have a cornea to protect our head. due to something or uh, due to old age this cornea becomes blur so this types of the uh, defects could occur due to the uh, cure due to uh, uh, that is laser surgery or the surgic surgery few more uh, the common uh, diseases or the defects are color blindness in which a person is not able to see uh, or differentiate between the two colors when the differentiate between a color when the two colors or two or more colors are mixed together this is uh, probably heritated and there is uh, nothing uh, you can do for this uh, color blindness and uh, the another type which is the baddest of all scenarios is the blindness in which a person is not able to see at all so these were the diseases so what if a person is blind what are the different technologies we are going to learn in the technologies for the blind uh, that is usually challenging so what uh, uh, there was uh, uh, there is a system called barrel system in which a punctuation of the six dot combination in this like this way it is made and different patterns are included so we are in fact not using our eyes but our skin knowledge or the hands to figure out or convey these messages to the our brain by reading it and some people what they do is make sounds so uh, if uh, something is here and a person is here he makes a sound and calculates he is habitual of calculating this that uh, there a uh, normal air the speed of the light is in 330 and if he is hearing the sound in one second that means it is only uh, that is 165 cm away from it so these people calculated uh, with the echo of the sound and what the some people do they actually taste the sound they have a taster in their tongues and which is connected to the brain to make them taste the things around there or to, in fact we are not seeing we are tasting the things around it so to avoid all these defects or the diseases in human beings what are the different eye care you have to take so first you should always wash your eye with cold water and you should never be rubbed uh, to your eyes and always visit a doctor once or uh, two eyes a me, uh, month and if you are uh, not able to see the blur away objects uh, I, i recommend you to visit a doctor faster and faster because these defects if uh, can be cured at a smaller stage is better so let's summarize what we have learned today first uh, we have started learning what we have learned in the previous grades and uh, then we started learning the reflection laws of reflection regular reflection and the diffuse reflection then we learned about the plane mirror then the images formed by the plane mirror then multiple reflections of the plane mirror and what are the different types of the examples which are using the multiple reflection then we learn about the concave mirrors then we learn about con uh, concave mirror convex mirror then we learn about the refraction of the light in which we learn about lenses concave lens and the convex lens then we learn about dispersal of light uh, how are the rainbows formed and uh, what are the typical compound uh, components of the human eye in power of augmentation persistence of vision and the different defects that is called in the human beings and how do the visually challenged people take uh, handle these scenarios and how we can take care of our eyes so friends i hope that the live chapter is clear to you and at the last thanks for watching